In advanced economies, the common policy approach is that innovation in businesses flourish because of links with technology institutions, universities and other formal agencies. However, often in low-income countries, these external bodies are not as well developed. Research into how SMEs acquire innovation incrementally and essentially do it on their own was undertaken by Tilburg University, Radboud University Nijmegen, with collaboration with African academic institutes. Let's take a look at three innovative business environments. A video game company in Ghana, a stone business in Uganda, and a gasket manufacturers in Kenya to get a glimpse of the findings. The environment is uh, very key um, because as a game company, as a tech company, that builds apps and trying to bring up the next generation of game programmers you need a very supportive environment. We've been receiving quite some number of support. We had office space, um, an immediate network of like-minded um, companies and startups all put into one, one space. It was very encouraging. We've had a lot of exposure, I think, on BBC, with our first game that we launched, iWarrior, in 2009, received international coverage. We've been on Forbes, uh, BuzzFeed, BBC Click, Al Jazeera, CNN. The US Embassy also has uh, recommended our work. So for coverage, we've, we've actually solidified our name as a game company from Africa. So we faced a lot of challenges and we are still facing anyway. Our industry is very unique. Um, banks wouldn't loan you money for a tech company. Um, uh, the government does not really understand what is, what is happening. Local angel investors just don't understand the tech and it's a very risky um, industry for them. People also think that technology is cheap, but it costs money. So you, you need to, the money that you put for agriculture, you need to reserve that same amount for the technology space as well, even more. I see a growing number of game companies in other countries, Nigeria, Cameroon, Kenya. We are not just building a company in Africa, we are building a whole new industry. We will make it work. As Letty Arts illustrates, International exposure is important for not only support, but benchmarking business strategy and product quality. Indeed, SME owners are told business is challenging in Africa, particularly for technology companies. Whilst there may be a lack of formal support, the research observed that what is key are business incubation and networks, particularly informal contacts, which bring together like-minded people to learn from one another about technology and running a business. However, at the same time, the research revealed that this is not taking place enough. Let's take a look at a stone company in Uganda who does not rely on a business network for development. We are members of, uh, of the Uganda Small Scale Industries Association. Just like I can help anyone building with, with stone advice, a lot of friends and colleagues come in here and, and give me support finance, different technologies, legal professionals. I have had a lot of works that I have implemented in Rwanda. I have had a lot of uh, deliveries that I have taken to Nairobi. Our project is still small in outlook and outreach. We still don't have the capacity to do what this economy needs. We are only employing about 35 people directly. And indirectly, we are able to support about 500 or so people. Now, if this project is given the resources that it requires, I know there are employment opportunities here. We can increase household incomes in East Africa. 
As with the Stone Company, most interviewed SME owners reported the absence of government support whilst highlighting the role played by other small businesses, particularly for ideas, technological and financial advice. The research also highlighted that whilst interactions with international customers increased quality and technology standards, SMEs struggled to invest in the skills and knowledge of their staff to meet demands. Let's take a look at a gasket company who have to build employees' knowledge from scratch. Gaskets are normally found within the engines of motor vehicles, so we import and we manufacture them locally also. The idea of NASA came about due to public demand to bridge the gap between the, let's say, the poor and the rich because imported gaskets were a little bit more expensive. Not everybody that started here is here now. I know of several who have started their own companies. So that's good to the environment because the skill, when someone has acquired the skill, you can teach someone else and the community will grow at large. The challenges that we have in keeping up with innovative updates is semi-skilled labor. So for us to employ a new machine or a very innovative machine, we have to have the skilled labor. So it will take time to train these people. External bodies such as the government don't really support local companies. It is very difficult for them even to know you. And the banks also, you cannot manage to acquire a loan from a bank very easily, especially a large sum per amount. You require collateral and so many other things that, and also their interest are very high. We have no government involvement or what. We are just alone like that. We just work hard ourselves. Most researched SME owners face a lack of skilled labour and innovativeness amongst their staff to move forward. This suggests fundamental potential for improving the links between educational institutions and SMEs. As highlighted in all three cases, governments also need to improve their relationship with SMEs by becoming a true partner, promoting local industries and technology and creating long-term stability. The involvement and interactions with business networks and stakeholders employer federations and labour unions, for instance, is equally essential for strengthening an SME innovation system.